All right, put your books away. Now, I thought we might spend the rest of the afternoon sorting out the approach we're going to take to the assignment on local pollution. Now, to save time and arguments, I've organised you into the groups you'll be in. Oh, okay, boss. Settle down. Now, the first group of seven is Ben, Maria, Ronnie, Harry, Van, and Susie Peters. That's only six, sir. Ah, well, thank you, Harry. I can always trust you to be on the ball. Well, um, in that case... Oh, sir. Right, um, uh, Jimmy Kovac can go in that group too. Yes. Oh, no, we don't have to have Poovac, the local garbo, do we? Oh, come on. Go back to sleep. Thanks for sharing that with us, Harry. The second group is Marco, Yasmin, Trudy, To you. Hey, Nesto, who's team are? You're not. What do you mean? Well, what I said. You're not on the side anymore. Not until you come to every practice and every game. Well, I'm here, aren't I? Yeah. Every practice, every game. We had a meeting. Harry, I'll handle this. Look, mate, it's not like I don't want you on the side. But like Harry said, we had a meeting. We decided if we're going to be playing seriously, everybody has to turn up on time. Well, if that's the way you want it. Well, play on. with that rubbish. Gotta load the bins. Dinner in half an hour. I don't know how you can stand this. It's all part of the job. Come inside before you get your uniform dirty. And I want you to read me some mail, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Wallace, but it's all systems go around here at the moment. I'm absolutely flat out. But I could pick up the load late tonight. About ten. OK, I'll let myself in. Bye. How was school today? OK. Mum, you're going to have to learn to read. And we can afford it. It doesn't cost hardly anything. We'll see. When? When the time is right. Read me the mail. It's three. Two letters and one phone bill. How much is the phone bill? 147 calls at 25 cents each, plus service charges, comes to a total of $67.26. What does it say, the number of calls? Yeah, 147. How did we ever make that many? Well, that's less than two a day, plus gas and electricity. Electricity is 73.20, and the gas is 52.45, which makes a total of $192.91. Can we afford all that? We'll be all right. Where's the bank book? Jimmy! Jimmy? Just. When you get paid again? Next week. Now, mind your own business. But it is my business. I don't want to talk about it. OK, how was today? Mr. Sell said it's the big group assignment on pollution. Group what? Assignment. You know, where the teacher makes a group of people work together. It's supposed to encourage cooperation. Everybody in the group does a bit. And you're supposed to do it in your own time? Yeah. But how? You don't have any time. Maybe you should stop the compost. Mum, don't hassle me. I can handle it, OK? I'll get it. Mr. Galia? Oh, please come in. For a moment, Mrs. Skyvac. I'm sorry about the mess. Please sit down. No, thank you. I'm here only to tell you I am angry, Mrs. Skyvac. Very angry indeed. Why? What has happened? If you ever complain of what you are paid, why not take it up with me instead of the Department of Labor? What? Do you know the meaning of the word loyalty? Perhaps you have forgotten what it means. I don't know what you're talking about. I have nothing to hide. All my employees are happy. We are a family except for you. And now because of what you have done, those government bloodhounds will be sniffing around all the time. You have stabbed me in the back. Don't share my mother. You are making a mistake, Mr. Galia. I have never been to the Department of Labor. I'm like the others, happy working for you. You really expect me to believe this? My mother's not a lawyer. Be still until you're spoken to, boy. Loyalty begets loyalty, Mrs. Gover. But when trust is gone, goodwill must surely follow. Yes, I do. It's funny. 
me. Sometimes when I really want him around, I just look at his picture and I can hear him talk. I remember his voice better than anything. Even better than what he looks like. He loved you very much. I wish he was still here. That Mr. Galo would never have spoken to you like that. It's just misunderstanding. You wait, Mum. One day when I get older, I'll make heaps of money and you'll never have to work again. Shh. You mustn't worry so much about money and working. It's enough for me that I have a boy who loves and looks after me. Okay, bedtime. Dad snoring so loud. Ronnie! Jimmy's waiting! Coming! Shouldn't be long. Needs a bomb under him in the mornings. Is your mum home, love? Yep. Good. Ronnie! Hurry up! You'll make Jimmy late! Coming! Have you brushed your hair yet? Oh, Mum. Go in and give him a boot up the bum for me if he's much longer. Really. If you don't mind me getting on with work. No worries. I'll do all the talking. Just imagine you've got the radio on. <laughs> that boy of yours never seems to stop moving. Can you switch him off? Uh, he rushes into everything. I wish Ronnie develop a problem like that. Jimmy tries to do too much. He's like a, a bull at a fence. A gate? <laughs> well, if only he could think before he does speak. Oh, I think they're all like that, love. Now he worries about how much money we have. Wants to be the man of the house, eh? We do have struggles sometimes. He wants to take the responsibility for the bills. The terrible thing is we do rely on what he brings home. I think it's not good for him to become a man so soon. I have to take on some more work. So why you got stuck into all this so early today? Yes, I want this badge done quickly. There's some trouble with the boss. What happened? Somebody rang the Department of Labor pretending to be me and complained he wasn't paying award wages. Who? Beth and Noel Draper? Why? They complained about me playing music while I work. Are you kidding? No. They must have very sensitive hearings. Well. I think it's just because I play the same tape all the time. Oh. My husband favorite. Okay, don't forget your social studies homework. See you tomorrow. Uh, Jimmy. Can I have a word with you, please? Looks like you're in trouble, hot shot. See you outside. Have a seat. Well, I thought we might have a little chat about your report. What do you think of it? Not much. At the moment, Jimmy is working well below his capacity. Do you know what that means? I'm not trying hard enough. Well, not exactly. It means that you're not getting the good results you should. Now, what I haven't mentioned is that you stand a good chance of failing social studies and history. How do you think your mum will feel about that? I don't know. I mean, you, 
You've done some really good work in the past. That, that assignment you did on Leonardo da Vinci, that was excellent. Really excellent. And yet there are whole other areas of your work you just didn't bother with. Why was that? I didn't have much time. Well, you had enough time to do 50 pages on Leonardo. Perhaps you... you only do the things you're interested in. I suppose. Well, I hope you have time to discover some interest in this local pollution assignment. Now, when your mum's read the report, I think the three of us should get together, have a conference and discuss your progress. Understood? Jimmy! Understood. I'll try, but she doesn't have much time. She has to work really hard. She's very busy, sir. Just ask her, okay? Yes, Mr. Sir. So what did old Silly have to say? Oh, he wants to have a conference with me and Mum about my report. Whenever they use words like conference, it means trouble. <laughs> so what do you reckon about this pollution assignment? Got too much to do to think about it much. It's good hell of the teams in our group, eh? Doesn't make much difference to me. I just reckon that if you and Harry could get on a bit better, then an Oh, would... Bonnie, I've already told you, I don't have time for the team. And I've got too many other things to worry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I'm gonna get heaps when Mum and Dad see what he wrote about me. Oh, it wasn't that bad, was it? Ronnie works to his level, but his behaviour is sometimes boisterous. <laughs> Not only am I a dummy, I'm a pest as well. Wish I was like you. No dad and mummy can't read English. Look, it's not much fun, I can tell you. I'd give anything to get my dad back. And don't tell anyone about my mum, OK? Sure. Sorry, mate. Didn't mean it. How's the day? Not bad. So what did you do? Well, you know, the usual. Uh, Jimmy, do you have something for me from school? Like what? Like your report. Liz Dixon told me about you today. Yep. Here it is. Well? Look, Mum, I can't read it to you now. I've got to deliver at Hartley's by five o'clock, but I promise I'll read it to you when I get back. Did you do well this time? Not bad. For a boy genius. Should have had those eyes operated on months ago. If it's any of your business, which it isn't, you'll be pleased to know that I'm booked in to have them done next month. Oh, I'll believe that when I see it. Well, meanwhile, I need something that'll make sure my chooks get fed, whether or not I'm there. I'm telling you now, what you want doesn't exist. Hey, Mr. Hartley! Hey, there's trouble! This week's Black Magic delivery. Now, how about a new price? What about a dollar seventy-five? <laughs> how about a dollar thirty-five? Oh, have a heart, Mr. H. 
With the time I put in, I end up with about two bucks an hour in the hand. Dollar forty-five. And I've got a mum who needs help with the bills. A dollar fifty, that's my final offer. Ah, oh, you got yourself a deal, Mr. H. <laughs> what is this black magic stuff anyway? Oh, it's compost. I make it myself. Oh, sounds like one of your battle lines, Angus. <laughs> What's the damage? New price, three dollars. Hundred percent markup and still great value. <laughs> Why don't you get young Jimmy here to make your chop for you? He fancies himself as an inventor. An inventor, eh? Yep, specialise in recycling. All my products are made of reused materials, Mr... Uh, Stevens. Sam Stevens. Call me Sam. Oh, right, Mr. S Sam. So what is it you're after, exactly? Well, my eyes aren't too good at the moment, so I need something that'll make sure that my fowls get fed. It'd help if this could be done automatically. How many chooks you got? Fifteen. And the feed has to be spread out over a wide area so the weaker birds get their fair share. Mm. I reckon I could probably design something, but trouble is, I really don't have much time. Well, I wouldn't expect you to do it for nothing. If it does the job it's supposed to, I'd be willing to pay you. Oh, that's different. How much? <laughs> I saw this man down at Mr. Hardley's store, and he wants me to make him a chook feeder. What man? His name's Mr. Stevens. I get 50 bucks to start if he likes my design. Jimmy, no man is paying you any money until I have met them and said OK, OK? Mum, this is my first order. This is what Australia needs. I read about it in the paper. Homegrown industry. I could be a part of the clever country. You won't be getting any money from anybody I haven't met. Well, when can you meet him? When I have the time. Australia also needs boys who will go through their podcasts with their mothers. Now. Maybe I could invite him around to dinner. Maybe. Your report card? Yeah, OK. Down the side here, it just says the name of the subjects, and, and down the bottom, Mr. Saw wrote, Jimmy is enthusiastic and works hard. Well, that's the same. Well, nothing much, just the name of the school, the address, and, and what we did in all the subjects. <laughs> Is that all? What does it say here? Here. Yeah. Um, just that I haven't missed any days and that my behaviour's satisfactory. Are you sure that's all these? Geez, Mum, why don't you learn to read? It's so dumb that you have to ask me all the time. I'm sick of always covering for you. Contains vital information about a major public health issue. In a Lucky kid. Who? Over the fence. They're not playing their jangling music all day. They're stinking out the place like a sewer. I don't know what you're on about. Don't you stick up for them, Noel? I wasn't. That kid's a pain in the backside, no doubt about it. We don't want any trouble at the moment. No use making enemies all around the place. I'm not thinking of people all around the place. I'm talking about the stink from the garbage tip next door. I can't smell anything. You will. Go to the back door, you'll soon realise which way the wind's blowing. It's disgusting. Those people have got no idea about how to live in this country. Factory in the lounge room, pigsty in the backyard. Maybe you should go and have a word with them. Wouldn't do any good. The brat wouldn't listen and the mother wouldn't understand. Not that it'll make any difference once I've finished with them. Just what are you up to? Don't you worry about it. Now don't you go doing anything stupid, Beth, you hear me? You hear me? What number house is this? This is 22. Ah, so this house must be number 24. Who wants to know? My name is Chan. I am from the council. You're the health inspector. That is correct. Well, you'd better come this way. Normally, I'm not the type of person to whinge or complain, well, but people from those sorts of places need to be taught, you know what I mean? No. Not that all foreigners are like that, not by a long shot. I mean, some people are just plain ignorant, aren't they? Many people are ignorant, yes. 
There. Take a whiff. I beg your pardon? Breathe in. There does seem to be an odour. What did I tell you? Although I do not find the smell very strong personally, I must act on a complaint. Why doesn't she complain to me? Mrs. Draper says that you have refused to discuss it. Oh, that's bull. She hardly even says hello to us. To be frank, that does not surprise me, but regulations are regulations. So what's going to happen now? It is my unpleasant duty to tell you that the smell must be gone within 48 hours. Or? Or the offensive materials will be removed by the council. So the council will take it and throw it all away? Yes, I must go now. I will return to reassess the situation. Can't you just wait a couple of weeks and let me figure something out? No, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Mr. Trump. God, God. All that work I've put into the business. How can that man just tell him to throw it all away? Mr. Trent does not make the rules. And maybe they've got a point next door. The smell is very strong. But I could have tried to do something. They didn't even try to talk to me. They just dobbed me in to cause trouble. Well, it looks like that. Those drapers must really hate us, Mum. I'm gonna go let the tires down that dumb truck. Hey, Jimmy, come back here. There's no point to talk like that. You only make things worse. But, Mum, we have to fight back. No, we must do nothing that will get us into trouble.